Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Now, many of you may know that I put out a challenge to Flatsoid the other day, and well, he's answered it. Now, this is a great time for me to go over something that I have touched on in the last few years, and that is How to Talk to a Science Denier, uh, which is a book by Dr. Lee McIntyre. Now, Dr. McIntyre went to the 2018 Flat Earth International Convention, and he spoke to many of the participants and several of the leaders to try and see if there were common characteristics of people that believed in conspiracy theories and denied science. Now, while his discussion was primarily involving flat earthers as kind of a prototypical conspiracy theory and science denial, he also touched on climate deniers. And he was able to identify five common tropes or characteristics of those in the science denial community. And those characteristics are cherry picking, conspiratorial thinking, promotion of fake experts over real experts, poor deductive and scientific reasoning, and an inappropriate expectation of perfection from science. Now, I've talked about a lot of these in the past, but one that I haven't really talked about is the characteristic number four, which is poor deductive and scientific reasoning. Now, as you know, I put out a four minute video challenging Flatsoid and his panel to come up with an experiment or observation that would satisfy them as to whether or not the Earth was a sphere or a flat plane. And you can see that video if you'd like to get more information about it, but the take home message from it was that they needed to design this experiment and then predict in advance what the findings would be on a flat earth and on a spherical earth. And then we would conduct the experiment and compare reality to those two predictions. And they had to agree in advance to accept the results of this experiment. Now that four minute video prompted a two hour response from Flatsoid and his panel. And it really demonstrates very nicely this characteristic number four, which is poor scientific reasoning. So let's go through it a little bit and see some of the techniques that they used. Now I'm going to remind everybody that this was just a friendly challenge for them to design an experiment. Now they're just getting ready to put me up on the screen right at the start of the show. And you see the uh, title is Glover's Can't Science. But as he's introducing me and talking about this video, he's going through a poisoning of the well fallacy. And he spends the first couple of minutes just talking about how bad of a person I am. Now, here's the first bit of poor scientific reasoning. Uh, scientists like me, we really don't care if you call us names. We don't care if you agree with us or not. You know, evidence is evidence, facts are facts. He's doing this primarily for his audience to try and prep them to disregard everything that I say. Now, his intention is not to respond to the video. He primarily just wants to mock it and he wants to get his audience on board with these insults. So let's go ahead and have a look. Yeah, but, oh. but what I want to point out is this guy is so, so wrong when it comes to science. It's not funny. Um, everything he literally, this whole video is made about, seems that he's butthurt that his globe is false. And um, now he's trying to, as they always do, reverse the burden onto us to try and prove things that they fail to prove. You know what I mean? So it's like they're trying to make their problem ours. And while he's doing this, he's keep calling the thing an experiment. But look, it's very hard to disprove something. Like uh, he's claiming, he's pointing to us to disprove Earth, yeah? It's a globe. Boy, the flat earthers certainly love their logical fallacies, which is kind of interesting because logical fallacies are used with deductive reasoning. Science does not use deductive reasoning. It doesn't prove things. What it uses is inductive reasoning, which means that we have evidence that supports a particular thing and we can rule out other things. So for example, a 24 hour sun in Antarctica supports the globe, but it effectively rules out the flat earth. So let's go ahead and have a look at this fallacy that they're trying to use, the reversal of the burden of proof. Well, that's the earth. All right. We've understood this for 2,300 years, and that's based upon millions and millions of observations and measurements, including, I might add, images of the Earth from space. You're trying to make a claim that this is wrong. You are welcome to make that claim. However, you have to prove it, and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So the fact that you look out your basement window and the Earth appears to be flat to you doesn't help your case. That doesn't make it the new baseline. 
Those of us in the science community know full well that when your height above the ground is very tiny compared to the radius of the sphere, your horizon is going to look flat. You have to have a height above the ground that is significant compared to the radius of almost 4,000 miles before you're going to start to see left to right curvature. It wasn't until the 1920s and 1930s that we were able to go high enough in balloons and aircraft to actually be able to see left to right curvature on a regular basis. However, based on our understanding of the Earth, we knew to expect it centuries before. So me challenging you to come up with an experiment or an observation to tell us one way or the other is not a reversal of the burden of proof. It's simply a matter of designing an experiment or an observation that will give us a clear answer one way or the other. Obviously, you don't want to do that. And obviously, I know the results of it already. Well, let's see what it says. Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and I wanted to make a quick video and release it tonight after I saw a video on Flatsoid's channel. His guest was Will Duffy, and of course they were doing their usual abusive selves, but there was... I just want to ask you a question, what abusive selves were we doing to Duffy? Well, that's a great question there, Flatsoid. Uh, typically, when people that are in the science community like myself or like Will Duffy come on to channels like this, you spend most of your time just insulting them. Uh, that's abusive. And that's what I am referring to. You know, just have a listen to any of my videos on Nathan Oakley, and you'll see the type of abuse that people get when they go on these channels. Will Duffy was no exception, and you were very typical flat earthers. You did nothing but insult him, uh, question his morals, question his honesty and integrity. Um, I'm very surprised that he spent as much time on your channel as he did. And while I certainly have no problem analyzing flat earth channels, I don't go on them for the most part because quite frankly, they're not worth my time and you know, they're not worth the aggravation. Now I do want to take a moment. Um, our friend Sleepy Warrior, Anthony Riley is coming in now. And before they continue, the panel has to go into something that is very typical in flat earth and that is to mock education. This is just a rather blatant attempt to devalue any contrary opinion to their flat earth fantasy. Yeah. Do you remember that um, that that live stream I did in Liverpool with the um, the physics girl and the the guy that she was with? Oh yeah, yeah. She was she's um, she claimed that she had a um, she just done a master's degree uh, on quantum mechanics. I think she said it was, and she was arguing with me, real world, that the dependent variable was the presumed cause, the dependent variable, the DV. And I was like, no, the IV is the presumed <laughs> cause. And you can't calculate what? That arguing it black and white with me that it was the dv that was the presumed cause I, honest to god i was i was gobsmacked when she was telling me this i said look how can you have a, a master's degree in quantum physics or whatever it was that she had and not know what the iv is in a scientific experiment and she 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 pulled the well i, I think i know more than you because i've got it and i was like yeah but you don't know what the dependent variable is the thing is You'll fail primary school science if you have to say the independent other uh, the DV causes anything. Now here what we have is another classic flat earth tactic and that is playing the definition game. Uh, actual scientists don't use seventh grade science protocols when they do their work. We don't talk about dependent and independent and control variables. The scientific method is very simple. Ask a question, propose an answer, make a prediction based on that proposed answer, test it, and then analyze the results and report them. It's as simple as that. There's no requirement to have any specific checklist that you fill out. And this is just basically the old quantum eraser. You know, I'm going to give them a scientific method that nobody can pass. We'll talk about this a little bit later when we, when Flatsoid gets confused about measurements and margin of error. Now there's an awful lot of really good stuff uh, about the mindset of the flat earth in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here and work on some additional segments, but I thought I'd release this kind of as a teaser for future videos. So make sure you give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you again with the next one. Take care, guys.